my goodness. A moment of joy. Nice to meet you finally. Brought about by unimaginable pain. Doing okay? Yeah. This is a sisterhood that unfortunately no one wants to have to be a part of. No. And we wouldn't wish it on anyone. At all. They call themselves the Sisters of the Movement. Seven women, all who've lost siblings who died by police or in police custody, all unarmed. My sister is Sandra Bland and she died in police custody. My brother is Botham Sha and he died in his apartment by a police officer. I'm the twin sister of Terrence Crutcher, and my brother died leaving school with his hands in the air. My sister was Chantel Davis. She was murdered by NYPD in Brooklyn by a car accident. I'm the sister of Delron Small. My brother was killed by an NYPD officer in front of his four-month-old son. My sister's name is Tatiana Jefferson. She was murdered in her house while playing video games with my nephew. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm Tatiana Jefferson. It's my sister as well, and she was killed by police while playing video games and protecting my son, Zion. Of the six individual cases, only one officer was convicted of murder. Officers in the other five cases were found not guilty, awaiting trial, or are no longer under investigation. That's a scary place to live in, to know that at any time my life can be taken from me, and I'm doing everything I'm told to do, and we still are looked at as easy prey, easy targets. How many of you saw the videos of your loved ones being killed, if such a video existed? Four of you saw your siblings die. I saw Terrence lying on the ground with blood everywhere. I have not been able to get that image out of my head of my twin laying on that ground like roadkill. What did that image do to you? Traumatized me. I didn't watch George Floyd's video because the thought of a grown man crying out for his mom bothered me because then I started to kind of obsess over it. Like, did Daron crawl out for our mom? Now they're channeling that pain into purpose, pushing for federal legislation that changes the use of force standard, ends qualified immunity that protects officers from lawsuits, and requires more federal oversight of police funding, as well as mandatory psychological evaluations. And earlier this week, after meeting privately with families whose loved ones were killed by police, President Trump signed an executive order on police reforms, a list of recommendations that he says will raise the standards for police conduct. These standards will be as high and as strong as there is on Earth. But some say the president's order did not go far enough including another grieving family member, the mother of Ahmaud Arbery, whose son was shot by two white men in Georgia earlier this year. I don't think that's enough, but I do think that is a start. I'd like to have some laws in place where um, policemen are held accountable for their actions. So what do you say excuse me, to the rest of us who are raised by black men who, whether we are black, white, or Latina, or Asian, will be raising black men who have black brothers we want to protect? What do you say to the rest of us as we hope to protect them, as we hope to raise them? How do we metabolize what's happening? Let's be transparent. Let's be honest. Let's start opening up conversations and treating children as they're humans, because they're treating our children like they're adults. We need to have the conversation, not with just our black and brown moms and kids. White people need to have that conversation. Right now, we need to face it headstrong because I don't want to see another traumatizing video. Our main focus is change, changing the laws, changing policing in general, because we know that pain. I live it every day, they live it every day. And we don't want anyone else to go through that.
I spoke with one of the eight families who was in that meeting with the president, and they described that meeting as contentious. All eight families refused the photo op afterwards with the president in the Rose Garden because they said that his executive order simply did not go far enough. They said without including a zero-tolerance policy that would require the firing of any officer who had a previous infraction, they haven't changed the law enough, a law that could have saved their siblings. Hoda, Savannah. Morgan, boy, we saw their pain, and we also saw yours, too, feeling that when they were, uh, when they were describing the things that they have gone through. How, how was that? Um, you know, it's hard. Um, I come from a multicultural family. I was raised by a black man. Um, you're hearing their stories, and you can't help but empathize. You can't help but wonder, how do I protect my brothers? How do I protect my father? Um, and that's a pain that echoes, I think, through a lot of communities of color. And, and they really gave a sense of why this pain is personal mm -hmm. for so many people and why they're saying there are things that we can do as a country to make it better.